Imagine building your dream app, but not with code, just by chatting with AI. With OnSpace, you can generate, edit, and customize your app in just minutes. You can add a database, logins, payments, and you can even publish directly to the App Store and the Google Play Store. And I know this all sounds like total magic, but it's really easy to do. And you can see here on the right, I have an app that I made using OnSpace and my app has a database where you can register an account or log in as I have. And now you can actually upload thumbnails and titles so you can kind of get feedback before you publish an actual video. So I thought this would be kind of a cool app for YouTubers to use so you can kind of like get general feedback from other people on the platform. So this is an app I made completely with vibe coding and just with some simple prompts, I can adjust how it looks, I can adjust the database backend, I can adjust literally anything and everything, and it is super easy to do. So let's take you through the journey of creating an app that I can publish on the App Store or the Google Play Store in just like minutes. The way I made that app is through a website called OnSpace AI. And OnSpace AI is a vibe coding tool that does everything in one spot, in one location. So you can create a backend database right on the application. You don't have to leave, you don't have to go to another tool, it's all right there. You can also create your Android app and iOS apps right from the same website so you can kind of publish them out everywhere. So we are on OnSpace AI. As always, I have a link in the description below. And if you enjoy AI, consider subscribing. I cover AI on a daily basis. So you can see here, I have two projects on the go. I just wanna show you the first one real quick. So I have a very, very simple prompt here. I want to build an Android app that will put the different controller combinations from this photo into a nice polished app. So I just literally gave it a photo of the commands from this controller and I said, hey, turn this into an application. So you can see here, we have the controller reference, 25 controls available and we can scroll through them, but we can also say, hey, just see the modes. Now there's 11, we can see movements. So it was able to take the content from this photo and put it into an actual application that we can see here. OnSpace AI has some pretty neat features to it. So if I just move myself out of the way, you can see on the right here, we can actually try this on your device. So if you have an Apple or an Android, you have to download the OnSpace app. And then from there, you scan the QR code and it will load the application on your phone. We can also use Supabase, which I'm going to give you an alternative in this video. And that's if you wanna have a database, we can download all the code, we can sync our project to GitHub, or we can go to code mode or like view mode. And lastly, we can hit publish and we can publish to the App Store or the Google Play Store. On the left side, like I showed you, we just have our standard chat. So let's go back home so when you first log in, you're going to get a screen that looks like this, and it should be pretty familiar. It's very similar to any other AI tool that's out there. You have a little window where you can put in a prompt, but things get really cool really quickly. So we can attach files, we can import from Figma. So if you have a design, you can import that in. And then also we can make it public or private, only we can view or the entire world. And we also have something called spaces or Supabase. So if you don't know, Supabase is a database backend where you can actually connect your application to Supabase. So if you want to do user authentication, for example, you need somewhere where your users can like create an email and that data has to be stored somewhere. If you want to create a marketplace, that data has to be stored somewhere on your application so you can use Supabase. They also offer something called spaces, which is on spaces own version of Supabase. So imagine having everything in one tool, not having to go anywhere. That is the whole concept of Supabase. You vibe code everything you need just here. So let's go to this project here and I'm just gonna scroll up for a second. I want to create an app where the user must log in or register before they see content. I need a sign up page, a login page and a forgot password page. So this tool is really cool because it's gonna go through, it's gonna read our prompt here and it's gonna say, okay, what do we actually need to do in order to make this work? So it said, hey, I can create this would you like to proceed with this approach? So it gives me its entire approach, and then I have to say, yes, it looks good, please continue. So it's vibe coding, but it's also like, hey, human, do you want this? And I'm like, yeah, great. So then you can see it goes through, it creates all the different files, and it tells you exactly what has been created, it tells you the key features, and it even says, hey, here's the next steps, be clear and specific for best results. So apparently it's saying, hey, we didn't like your 
prompt, you can do a lot better. So I have to work on that. And also it says, hey, do you want to edit the designer animations? Do you want to sync to GitHub? And your database is ready. So, so on the right, we can give it a try. So let's click sign up. Now our registration form is all filled out. You can see the email. We have our passwords filled in. We can hit send verification code. That is going to pop up a little window saying, hey, it has been sent, check your email. Nearly instantly, we get our verification code here so we can go back and we can enter it in and we can hit verify and check this out. We now have access to our application. We have an entire login system that we just created with a single prompt that says, hey, I want to create an app with a login system. So this is pretty cool. So we have like a little dashboard, analytics, settings, help support. It's all kind of fake because we didn't really give it information what we want to happen when the users signed in. So we can see our profile and can we sign out? Let's try it and boom, we have now signed out. Just like that, we have now signed out. Let's see if we can sign back in. Okay, so I'm going to actually put in the wrong information first. Let's see if it fails. We hit sign in and it actually says invalid login credentials. Now we put in the real password, we're back in. So our login system works. Since everything is on one tool, OnSpace does it all, at the top, there's something called dashboard. We can actually click that and we can actually see a list of our users. So here are our users and we can see the ID, the username, the email, we can delete the user if we want. So if we don't want this user anymore, we can delete the record. We can also click any of the fields and we can adjust it. So say we want to adjust the username of this user here, I can hit submit. And just like that, the data for our field for our user has been updated. We can also click in the top right schema and we can see exactly what we have and what we're working with. Because everything is on OnSpace, you can do this all in one location, which is really cool. Anyway, let's go back to our application and let's start to enhance it. Let's start to make it a little bit better. I want the bottom tabs to be feed, upload profile settings, that's the tabs down here. The angle is to have an upload section where the user can upload an image, a title, which will be shared on their profile as well as in the feed. On the feed section, they will swipe if they like it one way and swipe the other if they dislike it. And then after they swipe, the next photo is shown, which they have not voted on. I want a nice animation. The idea is for users to get feedback from others prior to uploading using a nice swiping system. So let's see what space is able to do with this really complex task. This is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. I know that all the large language models like Claude, Gemini, ChatGPT would have a hard time with this. You know how I know? Because I've tried it. So it is now on space's time to shine and let's see how it does. All right, so it is all finished and you can see our prompt here. We can go through, we can see all the different files that it's changed and we can also go back to a different version. So we can restore back in time at any point in time that we don't want any of the changes that it made. So anyway, let's see what happens. Let's, now we're signed in, let's take a look at our application. So we have feed and it says there are no thumbnails. Okay, there that's true, there are none. We can go to upload and we can upload a thumbnail with a title description, it even has pro tips about what we should do high resolution thumbnails include faces we can go to profile we can see our thumbnails total votes and a like percentage and log out there's settings so it says hey push notifications we can toggle it on and off the dark mode i don't think will work because we didn't tell it i think this is just more of a yep this is available in a future update. So it's put through some things that thinks, hey, this might be useful. And then we have like this index tab, which I'm not sure exactly where that came from. Let's try the upload photo now. So let's try this thumbnail here with our title and we're gonna hit upload for feedback. The thumbnail has been uploaded successfully. So if we go to our profile now, we can see the thumbnail here. We can also go to the feed and it won't show because it is our own thumbnail. So let's quickly create another account, log back in and see if we can see the thumbnail from the Franklin account. All right, so I just signed back in with a new account and I experienced the same problem. So we have to do a little bit more vibe coding for this problem to be fixed. So we have a new prompt here that says, hey, the feed is not showing the latest thumbnails from all users sorted by newest. So the users can vote, ensure users cannot vote on their own. So now OnSpace is going through, it's going to fix this problem for us, ensuring that we actually have the vote mechanism 
working. So the upload mechanism works well. We just need to work on voting. All right, so our application is working now and you can see this is the title. This is our little thumbnail here. We can take this, we can swipe right for like and we can actually see the little like icon. We can swipe left for pass. So we're making some pretty good progress. There is some problems that we want the little icon to like disappear or the little card to disappear when we swipe over and we want to go to the next one. So you can see it's kind of glitchy. We're going to give it another prompt or two to get this to work. We can even have it refresh, but we want the thumbnail to actually show properly. After some back and forth with OnSpace, I'm going to log into our test account here and I want to show you what it looks like. So we have big buttons now. I thought it would actually look better than the swipe just because we have so much real estate and I wanted it to look good. I want the thumbnail to look good. And then we have the title here. So I think it's starting to look a little bit nicer. It's looking more like my vision. You can see in the top right, we can see how much we have left and we can even refresh to see like, hey, is there any other thumbnails we need to do? So we can hit pass or we can hit, hey, I like it. And if we hit, I like it, you're gonna see, hey, no more thumbnails. And we just have some debug info. So we can modify this screen and say, hey, you've voted on all the thumbnails available. But if we go to profile, you will see here, and this is what it looks like if you vote and you can no longer vote, you can't vote on your own thumbnails. So you can only vote on other people's, but you can see here, there was a dislike on test and there was a thumbs up on our one here that said D and those are just me spamming on the keyboard, but you can actually see what it starts to look like. So we have a real application now that we have built from pure vibe coding. We have a nice settings page here and it tells you thumbnail feedback. We have our profile. Again, this is what I showed you. We can upload thumbnails and then we have our feed. And if there's new thumbnails, we can go through it. We can upvote, we can downvote. We can say, hey, this is good. This is not good. And you can get some feedback, some ideas of whether a thumbnail is good or not even before you upload it to YouTube. So this is our little application that we just created through pure vibes. I wanna go back to the dashboard for a second. I wanna show you, so we have our users. We also have data, which we didn't have before. And now we have our posts. So here's all of our post data. We also have our votes. So we can see like and dislike, and we can see exactly what they are. And we can see all of the data right on one application. So we're not jumping to multiple applications. This is absolutely wild. Your next question might be, Franklin, how do I actually take this application and upload it to the Play Store or upload it to the App Store? Well, well, before you do that, make sure you try it on your device so you can download the application and then you can scan the QR code and you'll just see it. You can see it on Apple as well as Android and it is absolutely wild. So we can see our application here. It works exactly the way it does on our computer as we're vibe coding and we can say, okay, this is good. Let's now put it on the Play Store or let's put it on the App Store. In the top right, we can click publish and now we can hit publish to app store and this will open up an entire little window where you can start a submission. So we can, now we have to go through all the steps so we can change the icon, give it an app name, an app version and an iOS bundle identifier. And when we're ready, we can hit continue. There's an Apple account. You're gonna have to add your developer email, your password, and then you can hit submit. I know that doesn't seem great, but this is just a simplified version. If you are on Android, Android is a little bit different. So we're going to go to publish. We can go to Google play and this gives you step-by-step -step of exactly what you need to do in order to make this work in order for you to bundle your application, your production app, and you're going to add some information to your settings. So you can just vibe code it and say, Hey, can you add this blah, 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 blah. And it's able to do it. Alternatively, you can click here and you can click download. We have the ability to download the code, or if you have a pro account, we can click that and we can actually just download the APK. So we are now downloading the APK from our application. We can use that APK. We can go to the Google developer console. We can upload the APK and get it published. Or maybe you want to just have an application just for yourself, just for friends, family, whatever you want. You can create your application this way and you can download the APK and then you can send it out and they can sideload it on their Android device. The APK is done building. So now we have the ability to one click. The APK is now downloading to our computer. We can use the quick install and scan the QR code with our Android device, or we can use the direct link, paste it out, copy it, paste it out to other people. Say, hey, check out our application, download it here, and we can do it that way as well.
On the left side, there is this present. We can click that and you can actually watch the video tutorials to gain credit. So when you're vibe coding, you can actually just gain free credit. And if I move myself out of the way, as always I'm in the way, you can see all the different credit you can earn. So you can learn how to solve app errors or how to craft the perfect starting prop. Then you're gonna get 50 and 50 and so on and so forth. I've been working on a couple of different apps and I have like a whole entire voice assistant with like an offline large language model that the user can download, the thumbnail swiper, and then the go-to controller reference. And all those applications have used less than 4,000 total credits. Now, if we go to pricing, you can kind of see what that looks like. For $17 a month, you're getting 6,000 credits. So I can say you're pretty comfortable to create at least two solid applications with just $17 a month, which is a very good deal. And we've only looked at apps in this video. There's an entire website section where you can make actual landing pages or whatever website you want. And you can pick from React or HTML. You can, again, make it public, private. There's all the same options, but you can make full functional websites. And what's really cool is if we scroll down, you can actually see what the community has made. So we have this YouTube wrapper app, so we can click that and we can see exactly what it looks like. Maybe we want a bill generator. You can see here, we can add our company name, address, all our information, and we can pick the template and it's going to generate a bill for us. Apparently there's like games as well, like card games here. There's this wheel of luck, so we can click that. We can see the different options. We can hit start spinning and we're going to have a wheel so we could add some options here. So we'll just add some random options just by hitting the keyboard. You can see it go, we can spin the wheel. This was all made by OnSpace. I love the integration between the online website and the app on my phone. So anytime I'm like vibe coding on OnSpace on my computer, I can quickly like hit reload on my phone and I can instantly see all my latest projects, all my latest things that I vibe coded, and then I can actually instantly test it out on my device, which is an absolute game changer. I think the pricing model is extremely generous, even though they don't really tell you how much credits you're using per like request, I've not hit any problems or walls. And like I said before, $17 a month is really reasonable considering I've used less than like 4,000 and you're getting way more than that for that $17. All in all, OnSpace is really good and the value is really good. That's at least from my usage and what you've seen in this video. I think it's great. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. What apps are you creating using OnSpace? What apps are you creating just using vibe coding in general? Love to know what you're working on. If you guys enjoy AI content, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Like the video, tell the algorithm, hey, I enjoyed this type of content, want to see more of it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with another AI video.